will not die yet. You did it. Hello everyone and welcome back to Waifu, where we analyze interesting Fire Emblem units. What else did you think of meds? In this series, I take a close look at units that are getting underrated or overrated by Fire Emblem players. So, if there's another unit you'd like me to take a look at, post them down below in the comments. And while you're there, don't forget to recruit the like button by turning it blue. Today, we are featuring Lysithia, the orbital nuke from Fire Emblem Three Houses. I remember the first time I played through Three Houses, I actually picked the Golden Deer and I had a lot of fun dealing heavy, heavy damage with Lysithia. One of the most satisfying moments was definitely realizing that the Death Knight could be killed by her Dark Spike spell. Even more fun was had when I completed the Lawrence Paralogue and obtained a Thysris, which turned Lysithia from a 1-2 range nuke into a 1-4 range nuke. That was great news for me, but bad news for enemies all around. She also learns the incredibly useful Warp Spell, which I used to skip an entire chapter of the Let's Play just for the heck of it. As the game went on, Lysithia proved to be a powerhouse over and over again, at some points capable of killing enemies in one hit. But as I played, I also took note of some of her weak points. She has very low mobility and she tanks hits like a wet paper towel. Lysithia is clearly a glass cannon. And in the past, the Fire Emblem fandom has gotten really attached to some of these, to the point where people overhype them quite a lot. Think of units like FE6 Lina, FE7 Nino, and FE8 Loot. Female mages with high magic power, but low durability. All these units have had times where they were considered really good, only for them to end up in the lower segments of a tier list later on. So, did Lysithia continue this trend of overrated female mages, or is she as good as fans say she is? What I'm going to do in this analysis is talk about how Lysithia does throughout the game, from start to finish, to see just how good she is. I'm going to talk about her base stats, her growth rates, her strengths, her weaknesses, budding talents, crests, her spell list, and of course the relic of House Gloucester, the Thysrus. Thyrsus? Thyrsus. 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 Thesaurus? God, this is impossible, man. And last but not least, this kind of analysis is incomplete without also looking at her promotion path, because if there's one thing people love to debate about her, it's what her final class should be, and she has a ton of options in that regard. But before everything else, let's start at the beginning. Lysithia is a member of the Golden Deer House, and joins with these base stats. We can see right off the bat that her biggest selling point is her 11 magic. It's right up there with all the other magically inclined students. Other than that, her bases are actually pretty bad, particularly her HP and defense. On harp mode, she will usually survive a single round of combat, but in Maddening, she's one of those characters you have to protect at all times in the early game, or she will just roll over and make you reach for that Divine Pulse button. And during the first month, you don't even have access to that. And her growth rates don't project a huge change to her stat layout either. She has the most lopsided growths in the game, only 20 HP, 15 strength, 15 luck, 10 defense, but then she also has 60 magic, 60 dexterity, and 50 speed. It's easy to see Lysithia is a character who wants to hit hard on player phase, but never wants to take a blow in return. This is usually easy to do, because she can attack from both 1 range and 2 range, so most enemies will not be able to counterattack. So she's very useful for setting up kills for other player units. A couple of other things deserve to be highlighted here. That speed growth of hers is really good, but also a bit deceptive, because her attack speed is being offset by the weight of her tomes. This means that depending on the difficulty, Lysithia may never be able to double reliably, and instead relies on one at KOs to get rid of an enemy in one round. Lysithia also has some very low charm, which means she's gonna have trouble connecting offensive gambits against most enemies that aren't demonic beasts, since gambit hit rates depend on the gap between her charm and that of the enemy. She's likely better off using supportive gambits such as Stride that are guaranteed to work. I generally don't find magical gambits to be that useful anyway, since they are limited to only one use per map, although they do have a wide area of effect and you can use them from 2 range. Speaking of limited options, it is also worth noting that at base level the only spell Lysithia knows is Miasma. There's nothing wrong with that, other than the fact that it only has 5 uses, so she might run out before the battle is over. As the game goes on, she will learn more spells and get more charges, so this will only be an issue in the very early game. She also has slight hit rate issues early in the game, but that will get better within a few chapters with the help of supports and battalions. And that's base level Lysithia for you. She does some really strong chip damage, is generally able to set up kills for other units, but she needs to be kept away from enemy fire almost all the time due to being so frail. And that's the easy part of analyzing. Now, what I usually do for characters in other games is I take a look at their stat averages, I see how they perform against your average enemy, I see if they double attack and if they do enough damage to kill, and how many hits they can take. And once I've done one such snapshot, I move on to the next sensible moment, usually after something significant changes about a character, such as a promotion or the availability of a new weapon. But the problem in Three Houses is that such a thing is immensely more complicated to do, since there are way more variables than in previous games, to the point where it's impossible to take into account. This is why it's taken me a while to do a detailed Three Houses analysis in the first place. Measuring a unit's performance is much harder. 
Initially, I was going to explain in detail why this was so hard to do, but as it turns out, it made the video way longer than it needed to be, and I really just want to spend time talking about Lacithia instead. So, I did that explanation in another video, and I will do a brief sum up here. There are way, way, way more variables in this game compared to other games. The huge amount of customization and player choice makes it impossible to say this unit performs roughly this well against enemies in this particular chapter. In this game, that's just not a thing, and anyone pretending that it is probably just uses their personal experience and states it as a fact. Between variable class paths, skill setups, combat arts, battalions, a really huge variety in enemy stats, especially speed, gardening stat boosters, equipable items, various recruitment times, and not to mention three proper difficulty levels each with the option of new game or new game plus, I just can't take all these possibilities into account. I'm gonna attempt to sort of take the average of all this. It's not that units turn into a completely different beast if I just change one variable, like Lysithia is not gonna turn into a physical tank, but let's just say your mileage may vary. Alright, so we came here to do analysis on Lysithia, so analysis we shall do. Let's do a bit of a compromise between all of these variables. I am mostly going to assume hard mode, no new game plus for this analysis, with the occasional mention of maddening mode. Not that Lysithia changes all that much between modes, but just so you know where I'm coming from. First off, I'd like to talk a little bit about Lysithia's spell list. It's pretty elaborate, as you'd expect for a magically inclined student. Interestingly enough, Lysithia's reason proficiency is entirely based on dark magic, while most students instead learn black magic. This gives Lysithia access to those weirdly named spells with Greek letters at the end of them. Lysithia starts with Miasma, and then learns Swarm at D+, Luna at C, Dark Spikes at B, and then finally Hades at A. Dark Spikes is of course her most famous spell, because it lets her kill the Death Knight, but it's also going to be her strongest spell for a good portion of the game, even against enemies it isn't effective against, since that's 13 might, whereas most of the other spells don't even reach the double digits. Then there's also her Faith spell list, now just like everyone else, Lysithia learns Heal at D and Nosferatu at D+, but from there she goes off the beaten path. At C level she picks up Seraphim, which is effective against demonic beasts, pretty nice, but the real fun begins at the Warp spell, at B rank. Now, this is the part of Lysithia that really sets her apart from most other magic users, in my opinion. It lets you transport another unit across the map. The amount of tiles she can move someone is equal to her magic divided by 4, counting from the tile that Lysithia is on. That opens the door for all sorts of fun strategies, the most well known of course being sending a strong unit straight to the boss of a kill boss map to end it in one turn. But it's also a good way to increase the mobility of other units in general, and especially nice if you run into an emergency where you need more help on one side of the map than you initially thought. Warp is very versatile, and I often like to say that even though Lysithia herself isn't very mobile, the option to increase other unit mobility the way she does is more valuable than just having a couple of extra movement points on her. She also learns Abraxas at A rank, which is another really powerful spell you could pick up if you want to cast some offensive faith magic, but there's no real advantage to using faith magic over dark magic for her, so it's up to you whether you want it. Now, let's talk about classes. I think almost every sane person will agree that Asithia is best off staying on the magical side of things, which means that at level 5 you will turn her into a monk. Not much of a choice there. You'll want to max out her class mastery before promoting to the next stage, since you will obtain the magic plus 2 skill and a drawback combat art. The former will make it easier to get one at KOs with her, which is very important since as I said Lysithia has doubling issues, while the latter is just a really nice positioning skill that can increase the mobility of both Lysithia and your other units. At this point in the game, tutoring wise, I think your first priority with Lysithia is to raise her faith rank from E plus to D so she learns heal. Having an extra healer on your squad is really nice, especially since early on your uses are very limited. From there, you'll want to focus on Reason to learn some additional spells, such as the ever useful Swarm to debuff enemy speed, and after that, it's usually nice to raise up her authority from E plus to D to gain access to magical battalions. Lysithia is actually very talented in all three of Reason, Faith and Authority, so this should go very smoothly. Now, some players would advocate going all in on Lysithia's Reason magic in order to learn Dark Spikes as soon as possible, so that she can kill the Death Knight in Chapter 4. While it is nice to get him out of the way in Maddening mode since he moves towards you if you're in his range, you can definitely beat that map while staying out of his area. In the easier difficulties, doing this is mostly just for style points and memes. I mean, not that there's anything wrong with that, of course. Well, and it gets you the Dark Seal if you want that. Among the intermediate classes, Lysithia has a choice between Mage and Priest. If she was a guy, she'd also have the option of going Dark Mage, but alas, that is not the case. As a mage, she gains the temporary ability to use fire, and if you master the class you get the wonderful Fiendish Blow, which effectively adds 6 magic whenever she attacks on player phase. Depending on what difficulty settings you're playing this on, it might just be the thing she needs to start one-shotting stuff, and that's why mage is in my opinion the best intermediate class for her. Priest, in exchange, offers 5 extra points of healing, which is pretty mediocre, and Miracle is an unreliable way to survive a potentially fatal blow. Not exactly a great skill on a unit that we're trying to keep out of direct combat. 
I should mention at this point that mastering classes is particularly easy for Lysithia because she has a personal skill called Mastermind, which doubles skill experience gained in battle. This refers to weapon rank and class mastery experience, but not the experience she needs to level up. Perfectly fitting for Lysithia's studious personality and really helpful throughout the game, ensuring that Lysithia doesn't have to linger in lower classes to master them. Instead, she can just promote as soon as she hits the required level. Now, so far, I think these choices have been pretty uncontroversial. Where things usually get heated is Lysithia's next steps. In the advanced section, we have once again two magical classes she can pick, Warlock and Bishop. Warlock offers Black Tomefare, Black Magic Uses times 2, and if mastered, Bowbreaker. While Bishop grants White Magic Uses times 2, White Magic Heal plus 10, Terrain Resistance, and if mastered, Renewal. Warlock is almost completely useless for Lysithia, since she cannot use any Black Magic. The only point of it is to learn Bowbreaker, which could help her against enemy bow wielders, though depending on her stats and the difficulty, you might not want to expose her against any to begin with. This is why I prefer Bishop, which can actually be a decent final class for Lysithia, as all of its traits are occasionally useful, except for Renewal probably. Renewal is pretty bad on a glass cannon. Now, one thing that really annoyed me when using Lysithia and other magic users in this game is the utter lack of movement on them. Up until now, they have 4 movement, which makes it hard to keep up even with most foot units, and you can just forget about keeping pace with the flyers. This also makes her lack of physic in her spell list extra painful, since she will have trouble reaching your other units for healing unless you hold them back. This is an important point to keep in mind when picking between Lysithia's master classes. Grammary, Dark Knight, and of course the meme lord itself, Mortal Savants. Grimmery is what I went with on my first playthrough, and it is the most straightforward continuation of what we've been doing with Lysithia so far. It doesn't require any additional weapon ranks, as Lysithia probably has been leveling up well enough in both Reason and Faith to comfortably make it through the exam by the time she hits level 30. Now, Grimmery doesn't have any of the fair skills for that juicy plus 5 damage bonus, but it partially compensates through giving plus 5 magic upon class changing, whereas the two alternatives I just mentioned only give plus 2. Grimmery has the worst movement out of all these three master classes, only 5, but at least it's still better than a bishop's 4. Grimmery's biggest advantage is probably the class skills that double your spell uses. Once again, black magic uses times 2 is actually completely useless since Lysithia doesn't learn any black magic, but the dark one doubles her number of all her good defensive spells, including dark spikes, and the increase in white magic uses is great for giving her 2 warp uses instead of 1. Now, I could talk about the growth differences between the classes, such as the higher speed growth on Grammary, but honestly, I don't think it's worth it. The time you spend in each individual class is around 10 levels, and a 5% growth difference over the course of 10 levels is, on average, only going to result in half a step point extra at the end of the road, while a 10% difference might be a whole point. These are drops in the ocean of all the other variables I've named, and not significant enough for me to spend time talking about. Class change bonuses, on the other hand, they're a bit more significant, but honestly, unless the difference is massive, they're not worth breaking your head over either. Skills, movement, and the required weapon ranks are a much more important factor, so let's get back to those. Let's take a look at Dark Knight. When you look at skills and movement alone, this seems like a great class for her. It gives her Dark Tome Fair to increase her damage output, and it gets her closer to that one-hit killing threshold. And it also solves her mobility problem. She will have 7 movement compared to that 5 of a Gremory, as well as Kanto to give her even more flexibility. This will let her heal or attack something and then retreat to a more advantageous position, making it easier to keep her safe, or keep up with other units if you want to frontline with her. Seems good, right? Unfortunately, there is a big drawback to this class, and that's the weapon ranks. In order to make it through the exams of the Dark Knight, she's going to have to train a lot in lances and riding. This is pretty tough on Lysithia, since she has a bane in lances and she never really has a chance to practice with either of them in battle. She doesn't want to go into a riding class until Dark Knight, and she definitely doesn't want to use lances. This means we cannot take advantage of Mastermind or the Knowledge Gem to learn these faster, which really sucks. The game lists C lances and A riding to make it through the exam, but you can pass it with lower levels than that with some saves coming. It takes a conscious effort though, and any activity points you spend on teaching Lysithia is time you cannot spend teaching other students. As for whether it's worth it, I haven't tried it myself. I do know that in some chapters, having a horse doesn't help you very much because the terrain ends up slowing them down a lot. So you'll have to dismount or reclass in order to avoid all the movement penalties. And if you have to do that, then you're really not getting much of a benefit from all the work you put in. Sure, Dismounted Dark Knight still has 6 movement, but that's only 1 up from the 5 of Gremory. The last class we need to talk about is Mortal Savant, the meme class. At first glance, this class looks like a happy medium between Dark Knight and Grimmery. You get the same speed as both of those, but you still get 6 movement instead of Grimmery's 5, and you get the fair skill, so you'll do more damage, right? Except once again, this class gives you the wrong fair skill. She gets Black Tome Fair, and as I said before, she uses Dark Magic, not Black Magic. And Sword Fair, of course, is completely useless on the Scythia when she's just casting spells. Unless, of course, we make use of her budding talent in Swords. Normally, the Scythia has a Bane in Swords, but if you tutor her a total of 12 times in Swords, that will turn into a boon, and then she'll gain the Soul Blade Combat Art. 
Soul Blade works much better with her than a normal sword attack, as it is a magic based attack with might that increases based on her resistance. From my experiments, this lets her do more damage than just by using spells, but of course the drawback of relying on the combat art is that it can only be used at one range and it can never double, so now she absolutely needs to get the one shot. She usually seems to be able to do it, so if this is what you need to get that one round KO, it might be worth. You can give her a relic like the Blood Gang or the Thunderbrand, and since she has crests, she won't take damage from using them, but a strong forged sword can also be good enough. Now, if you want to be a mortal savant with Lysithia, you need a high rank in swords. The game suggests A, but once again, lower can work. However, let's keep in mind Soul Blade is not locked to Mortal Savant. Mortal Savant is just the best at maximizing the damage with it. When using spells though, Mortal Savant is weaker than Gremory due to the lack of a relevant fare and the lower magic. And I personally prefer Lysithia to take advantage of her range. I think that'll usually be more helpful than a damage boost, but once again, your mileage may vary. If it wasn't clear already, I think Lysithia is best off sticking to Gremory. It gives her the opportunity to focus on her specialties, reason and faith magic, and instead of having to train in random other ranks like riding, lances and swords, you can instead give her authority to get better battalions such as the McQueel Evil Repelling Corps, which gives her a massive plus 7 magic and plus 30 hit when it's at max level. Sure, Gremory might have the lowest movement of all these classes, but taking into account how often horses get nerfed in this game, the difference isn't that big. And instead, she gets an extra warp use, which can be used to make other units more mobile. If you want to use Soul Blade, nothing is stopping you from unlocking her hidden talent, and it can be pretty good if you're willing to get up close and personal with your enemies. Now, there is one last thing I need to talk about with Lysithia, and that is the Thyrsus, a staff that increases the range of your magic by 2. The Thyrsus is the relic of House Gloucester, and for that reason, a lot of people consider it to be property of either Lysithia or Lauren, since they both have the Crest of Gloucester. However, it's worth noting that literally anyone can use the thing. People that don't have a crest will take 10 damage every turn they have it equipped though, and those with the Gloucester crest get an extra bonus, a somewhat hidden Pavise Aegis skill, similar to the shield that Felix often uses. There is a good argument for putting it on Lysithia and Lawrence, but I think you're making a mistake if you consider it a personal staff of theirs. I honestly find it just as effective on other magic units with crests, such as Mercedes and Linhart. Even Dorothea and Hubert can make good use of it despite their lack of a crest. All these units are so frail that you really don't want to rely on the skill to survive, and especially in Manding, someone like Lysithia is likely to get one rounded even with the thing equipped, so I don't really consider Thysris to be part of Lysithia's kit, but rather just a good option for her. And don't get me wrong, the Thyrsus is really good. One of Lysithia's biggest issues as a spellcaster is her lack of 3 range. While other people have access to spells like Thoron, Meyer, or even Meteor, Lysithia's entire arsenal maxes out at 2 range, so this is a great way for her to increase her range. Another way to do this would be to reach an S rank in Reason and then get Dark Magic range plus 1. This is viable, but it's not going to happen until late into the game, even with her Mastermind skill. The 4 range or even 5 range will let her attack from safer positions and avoid even more counterattacks, even from enemy archers. It's absolutely fantastic, but it's not her personal item. And I like to trade it around every once in a while so that all my mages can take advantage of its fantastic properties. I mean, Lysithia hates her crests anyway, so let's try not to put too much emphasis on them. Speaking of her crests, those don't really do a whole lot for her. The major Gloucester crest has a 20% chance to increase her might when attacking magically, so you might unexpectedly get a one shot where you otherwise would not, but generally it doesn't do much. It certainly doesn't compare to the physical equivalent, the Crest of Fraldarius. The minor Crest of Charon is much of the same, it has a 40% chance to raise her might when using a combat art. If you desperately need that extra might when using Soul Blade, you're probably doing something very risky with Lysithia and I recommend you stop doing that right now. And that's just about all I have to say about Lysithia. I think we can conclude that her reputation as a glass cannon is definitely earned, in the sense that her attacking power is through the roof, but her durability is really really bad. Personally, I think warp is her most standout trait, especially the double warp, which is why I advocate for the Grimory class above all the other options. I mean, it's not like the other builds will stop you from completing the game, I just think it has a great combination of unique utility and ease to get into, compared to the alternatives. The Thyrsus, it's a great tool in her arsenal, but I think people are a little too happy to assign its worth to the Scythia, rather than to the staff itself, which anyone can use, and you should definitely try trading it around a bit if you haven't already, because you'd be surprised what you can get out of it. I hope you enjoyed this really elaborate analysis of Lysithia. Let me know in the comments below how you used her in your playthroughs, how good she was for you, if you agree with my assessments or not. And if anyone tells you that Lysithia was a tactical nuke or a magical 4 range ballista, tell them they're sort of right, but also link them to this video so they can learn about the magic of training that thirsts around like the Dutch sharing a blunt. Before you leave, I have a couple of people to thank. I want to thank Hoshi for editing this video for me, this monster of a video, making it look great. I want to thank Rin for the thumbnail, and I'd like to thank Boo Fire, Dr. Anime, Shiki, Rangor, and Caitlin for reading the script. And last but not least, I want to thank you for watching. So thank you very much, and goodbye.